getting ready. Me Medics, Debbie Dean, CEO, is going to present with us and give us a little bit of background and history on the company. EVP, not Thank you. Sorry. EVP. <laughs> and uh, we're also being joined by Con and Young this morning. Thank you for joining us. We are a public company, so I have to put up our forward-looking statement, as you all know, and reference you to our 10K and T 10Q on the SEC website for filings. Um, a few investment highlights. Um, we are um, different th um, than some companies that you've been talking to. We have um, revenues in excess of $100 million, 118.2 last year. We are a profitable company and have um, um, 12 consecutive quarters are meeting or exceeding our guidance. We have a proven management team. Our CEO, Pete Petit, has 40 plus years in healthcare. Uh, companies and taking them public and uh, making them successful. We do have um, 21 plus patents in our IP portfolio, uh, 50 additional that are pending. We have distributed um, over 350,000 of our products over the seven years. We do have um, widespread reimbursement for our products with all the Macs and many commercial carriers. Um, and then also we have some patented process and a wealth of cl clinical and scientific research um, that we can review today if you want to as well. So Debbie, just before we get into this, I just want to back up a little bit. Wh okay. How would you describe me medics as a company? What do you do? We are a regenerative medicine company, a wound healing company. Um, we have Epifix, which is our product that uh, delivers wound healing outside of the body. Amniofix is our wound healing product inside the body. It's used in surgical uh, procedures. It's used in orthopedic procedures. Um, and so the first few indications in, uh, for the product that we've used in, that we've expanded and generated $118 million in revenue, is just uh, the start. Um, we have many other product uses as well as we filed our IND and started enrolling for plantar fasciitis for a biologic. Um, so we've just begun. So the very differentiating. So when we talk about cell therapy companies and we had Capricor and I introduced Pluristem earlier, we're talking about you know, clinical stage companies. Here we're talking about over $100 million in run rate in terms of actual revenues today Correct. and a product on the market. But, and as we get into the presentation, I'm going to want to talk with you a little bit more about kind of the dynamics of that product and okay. you know, the, the, how, it, how it kind of came to be sure. almost under the nose of everybody in the cell therapy space. Sure, and then, you know, the reimbursement as well. We've right. been highly successful with our reimbursement, uh, which makes, um, obviously, helps drive the revenue when the physicians and the hospitals are reimbursed for the product. I mentioned this earlier, 13 consecutive quarters are meeting or exceeding quarterly guidance. You can see how the ramp um, has sustained in the growth. And the bottom line, really, with this slide is that our product works and physicians use it and it's reimbursed. Uh, mission and technology, Memetics, as I said, is a regenerative medicine company. Uh, we deliver enhanced healing. We reduce scar tissue, reduce inflammation, um, immunoprivileged, and we have proven clinical results, 92% efficacy in those studies, numerous studies, um, even comparative studies to other products that we performed. And one large logistical advantage of our product is a five-year shelf life at room temperature. So... Um, I mean, this is very exciting stuff. So help me understand, is this is a product that's used primarily around wound healing, or are we talking about surgical scarring? You know, what's the spectrum of applications uh, that, that you're focusing on? Uh, the answer is both. Um, our Epifix product line is wound healing. It's external to the body. Our Amniofix product line is used to help reduce scar tissue in spinal surgeries. Um, we're being used in a lot of gynecological surgeries, urology, um, a vast um, area of internal surgeries that are, need, you know, 
uh, enhanced healing. They need to reduce scar tissue in those areas. Obviously, in some of the gynecological procedures, that's a huge problem that they've encountered. Well, and I'm just thinking about, you know, in terms of breast cancer and mastectomy and the amount of surgical scarring that's often a result. And in breast reconstruction that involves flap, there's often, you know, very, very long scar that's hip to hip. So is this something that could be impacted in those areas? It definitely can, and um, not to get too personal, but I had um, breast surgery, and we used the product in my case, and with the results that I see, the, um, my surgeon was astounded, I will say. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I'm happy to hear that. Thanks for sharing that, and you, can, you could imagine where my question surfaces from. So, so uh, how do you convince the surgeon, though, who's never done this, who's not used to you know, thinking that they don't need it, that this is something that's going to give them a better outcome? Well, what we always try to do, and we have invested millions and millions of dollars in our clinical and scientific studies, we really have a two-prong approach. Um, the scientific area, which Conan leads, we do a lot of um, animal testing, a lot of scientific research to understand the method of action of our product, to show uh, those scientific foundations. And then we do the clinical efficacy studies to prove that it actually works in those variety of areas. We currently have about 15 clinical studies going on. And how many, Conan, in the scientific area? Probably, <laughs> yeah, okay. probably okay. 20 well, plus. Well, I want to come back and focus on Conan, with Conan on some of that data, but let's go through the rest of the slides. Okay, sure. So uh, this slide just summarizes a couple of different types of scientific analyses that we've done on our product. Um, the top row summarizes a histological analysis. So this is uh, sections of our product. On the left, you can see EpiFix and section in comparison to two competitor amni amniotic membrane-derived products on the market today. Uh, the key thing you can see here is the thickness of our product. We, we utilize both layers of the amniotic membrane, the amnion and the corian in our product. So it is a bilayer product. And you can see that the, uh, some of the competitor products on the market today are single layer amnion only. So there's about a four to five times difference in thickness. You can also see from the histology that there's a preservation of the structure of the tissue matrix as a result of our purion process. Even though we're, you know, we, we dehydrate our, our product and that gives us our long shelf life, it preserves the structure and integrity of, of the, of the uh, tissue quite well. Shifting down to the bottom graph, this is a different type of analysis. This is looking at the preservation of the natural component of growth factors and chemokines that are present in amniotic membrane in our prion process, EpiFix product versus uh, uh, competitive single layer grafts. And clearly what you can see there on the left with the blue and red bars is the, is the uh, everything has been normalized to the amount of growth factors present in EpiFix, and that's 100%. 80% of those factors are found on the Corian, so you can see the power of the Corian, including it in your product, and about 20% is preserved in the Amnion, and that's in our Purion processed. So if you compare what's in both the Amnion and the Corian to other competitive single-layer Amnion graphs that are processed by other unknown to us proprietary methods, only about 5% of these growth factors are preserved in comparison to the Purion process product. So that's about a 20-fold excess preservation of the growth factor content. And just to finish the, the impact and what we think is going on, given this is a complex tissue, the myriad of growth factors, we think it is a multifaceted mechanism of action that's having a positive impact on a number of biological pro processes, including inflammation, uh, granulation, and tissue remodeling as part of the wound healing process and tissue repair in general. So, you know, it's, this is actually very exciting to me because the way I'm looking at this is as a carrier, as a scaffold, right? But, but it's also a scaffold that has its history, its legacy, or cytokines and growth factors that are embedded into it with a five-year shelf life. Right. It has 80-plus growth factors that are embedded in it that, you know, invoke a reaction um, that is delivered, as you mentioned, in a a very logistically easy way. Jayco likes our delivery a lot. Um, no freezers, no thawing, no issues with that. Um, and um, I think for those uh, reasons, it's been very uh, successful. 
So when the, when the craft arrives, does it arrive in a beaker and I trim it? Or how, how, help me understand kind of what this looks like and how the surgeon would use it. Sure. It arrives in a package about that size. Um, there's a two set of foil wrappers inside. Uh, one that you break and then the graft uh, with the other will fall on the sterile barrier. And then you open the other graft. All you have to do is open it and use it in the sterile packaging. Any more slides? No, that's it. Okay, good. So now I, you know, you know where I'm dying to go. So, so th this is an area that fascinates me. Uh, certainly, when I was in business development and working at Neostem, you know, we looked at the acquisition of this technology. Help me understand from a regulatory point of view, what was the history in terms of how this product came to market? And then where does the market sit today? Obviously with a hundred million dollars in sales and widely used and widely accepted, but, but you know, how, how should I approach this product as a regulator or, or in the regulatory landscape, if you will? Sure, there's a couple different ways. The Epifix product is a 361 HCTP product that's um, regulated by the FDA. We have other product lines, as I mentioned, our IND that's enrolling for plantar fasciitis. It's actually a BLA, a biologic license. Um, so those are the two pathways that our products fall under today. But when we say 361 FDA, I mean, this product was not approved with a BLA or with an NDA, right? This is really uh, being used under the purview of medicine or... Well, an HCTP is that you take, um, take tissue out of the body, you put it into the body for um, the same types of uses, and then it can be regulated under 361. And when I say regulated, I think some people use the word approved, but they misunderstood that, understand that we still have FDA inspections. We still go through all the filings in terms of registrations. We still have to uh, follow all their standards for manufacturing, um, even though it's a 361 product. But what kind of efficacy claims, and obviously I could see you have lots of post-marketing studies and, and lots of data. So is this a product that can ha has efficacy claims on the label? And help me understand how you were able to navigate the reimbursement landscape. Is this Medicare, Medicaid reimbursed as well? It is. Um, so the way, as you referenced to our clinical studies, that uh, we navigated the uh, MAC landscape and the commercial landscape is the um, vast clinical efficacy of our clinical studies. What they look at um, when they're evaluating a product and what they're paying for, we have um, a very high efficacy rate, around 92% in our studies. Um, but the other piece that we've studied, um, and you know, as some of the speakers were talking earlier about data, data is at the cornerstone of everything we do. Um, a series of us have been at informatics companies. Um, one early stage company I was at is now part of Thomson Reuters. So very, very deep data background. So we captured, took all this data to CMS, to the max about the efficacy of our product and the cost to closure. We manage um, meticulously how much, it, um, how much it costs to actually uh, close a wound, how much it costs um, in a surgical case. And so we have detailed documentation and data on those areas, and I think that's what was compelling to the max. Um, and then we did a head-to-head -head study against um, organogenesis and apple graft to show our heal rates compared to theirs. Um, and that has resulted in a tremendous amount of commercial coverage coming the first um, quarters, first three months of this year. Okay, good. Thank you. And tell me a little bit about, you know, close with me a little bit about what is the future of this company? You have $100 million in revenues. You're, you have a strong balance sheet. You have an existing product that it sounds like hasn't even penetrated the market yet. So help me understand, you know, where do you want to see this company go over the next year or two? Well, we have a five-year strategic plan that takes um, the revenues up quite substantially. That hasn't been disclosed, so I can tell that exact sum. Um, this year, we have disclosed that we expect to be in the 185, 190 million range. Um, and um, we believe that we're just, as you said, scratching the services with implications. We have 
um, urological uh, clinical studies going on right now, gynecological studies, we have breast uh, studies going on right now, um, a myriad of clinical studies, burn studies. So we think there's a lot more indications of our products, and we have a series of INDs we're filing. We've already filed one, started enrolling patients. We have a second one we're filing shortly. So it, um, it has a, an expansive um, landscape that it can go in. Terrific. Thank you so much. What a very interesting and exciting company. Essentially, not quite doubling, but really almost doubling revenues in the coming year. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.